combining uh, combining a, a speech about the separation of church and state with a, a political diatribe because uh, uh, as a uh, former basketball coach and school teacher and an ardent uh, union supporter and union steward and officer with the United States Postal Service for 29 years, being a union member for 40 years, uh, I can get a little bit uh, excited. And so you'll pardon me if I divide the, uh, uh, the room up into gyms and we have basketball practice. But to address an issue quickly, there are about four or five thousand things I'd like to say, but only three or four that we have time to, uh, to address. Uh, as a candidate for the Kansas State Senate, um, I constantly face, as, as Olitha would face, as, as, as an incumbent running for re-election, as Sammy faces, as, as uh, uh, Thomas faces, as Esau faced in his run in the primary to be a U.S. representative. We constantly run into, in Kansas, the issue of the separation of church and state. Now, what I mean by that is that I espouse an opinion, and I say something, and Olitha agrees with me or disagrees, or you say something, and somebody agrees or disagrees, and that's all well and good. And because we can discuss it, and we can agree to disagree. The problem arises in the arena of Kansas politics, and again, I, I, uh, I count out to, uh, to Alita because she's been there longer. I plan to join her, but she's been there longer. But my point very simply is this. It's fine for this young man or that lady to agree or disagree with me because then we shake hands and go have a cup of coffee. But what I run into is the element that I'm wrong because somehow I don't go to the right church. Uh, I don't go to a Pentecostal church, or I don't go to an evangelical church, and praise God I'm not a Jew. I'd never get any chance to succeed then. What I'm saying is that there is a definite problem, and the problem is that the people currently in power want to maintain a one-party system, and it's not the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, it's, excuse me, it's our party, and praise God, because we're we're the ones that he believes in. We're the chosen ones. We're the anointed ones. Well, I have something to say to address that. Yes, this is a diatribe, but this is something I want to say. Uh, I'm running against a 22-year, not a 22-year-old, but a 22-year incumbent for the Kansas State Senate. She's not here. I was at a, a, a meeting yesterday. So was Olathe. My opponent wasn't there. My opponent, however, was probably, unfortunately, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but she was probably somewhere locked securely in a bank vault, cutting, counting the money she got from her campaign contributions from the corporate bigwigs that are trying to run and have currently are succeeding to run this country. And the reason I maintain that point is that while I'm a Democrat and there are Republicans galore in Kansas, and while Mr. Jefferson is a libertarian, the people here, all of you, took the time to come here to listen, well, some of you to speak, but to listen to people speak. And when I talk about the separation of church and state, I am appalled at the way people are treated when they show the slightest tolerance for someone else. One of my best friends is an 80-year-old architect who is responsible for essentially designing the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. Quite an arduous task. But, uh, well, sometimes he runs into problems because he's a free thinker and a free speaker. And he gets in trouble because people say, well, that's, that's just my friend. Now, maybe this is a sermon without any factual documentation, but my point is this. The separation of church and state is something that is totally necessary, and it's, it, it, it's I'm adamant that whether I agree with Mr. Jefferson or Mr. Freeman or somebody else, Ms. Flaherty or not, they have the right to speak. They have the right to have their opinion. Now, that doesn't mean we can just pinwheel, pinwheel into a free world and have nothing, 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 no constraints. But we have to have a system of government that allows for disagreement, but mostly allows for discussion. I can assure you this, and I'm about done because I don't want to over, I know, I don't want to overstay my welcome, but one of my campaign speeches, I, when I end it, I always, I, 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 I implore them, I'm Pat Cantwell, da 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 da. And then I always say, folks, uh, please bear with me just one more moment. 
I truly believe, whether there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12 people, or 15, or 25, or 2,500, I truly believe that we can work together, you and I. We can work together to make life better for our families and our friends and our neighbors. Now, I'm not addressing specific issues here. And I'm not trying to get elected because you people are going to vote for me anyway, or you're not going to vote for me. The decision has already been made. This is a Saturday and the election's Tuesday. But my point is we can work together if we work with our old friend Joe. And everyone knows Joe. Geraldine, you sir, you know Joe. We all know Joe. Work with our friend Joe, J-O-E, Jobs, Opportunity, and Education. There's nothing there that says that only Methodists or Muslims are allowed to govern. There's nothing there that says Catholics have to bow down to, uh, uh, to someone who's Islamic or someone who's Southern Baptist. It's us. We the people. I believe that's in a few government documents. We the people can work together with our old friend Joe, jobs, opportunity, and education. And so I implore every candidate, Democrat, Republican, old, young, black, white, purple, green, I implore you to do the same thing that I ask. Walk with me. Join the parade. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Let's work together. There is no provision more important than the separation of church and state. My father was in World War I. My Uncle Bill was in World excuse me, my father was in World War II. My grandfather was in World War I. They were both medics, medical officers. My father carried a certificate given him by doctors when he came back because of his medical background in World War II. He had a piece of paper. Here, reach in your pocket and pull it out. He was allowed to do what he deemed necessary without a doctor's presence. He was able to do what he deemed necessary to sustain or not sustain life. And that's a pretty heavy thing to do. That, was the, that is what he was allowed to do because people trusted him to make the right decision. The separation of church and state is the one inalienable right and privilege that we have, but it is necessary to a proper governance. I have not addressed specific issues like medical marijuana. I have not addressed specific issues like alcoholism or anything else. And I don't mean to. The fluoridation issue, I was at a meeting last night and, and, and spoke with some of the people who are in the audience today. I have a very strong opinion. I am in favor of not allowing fluoridation. But that's just my opinion. If you disagree, more power to you. Somebody's going to vote. Gee, what a novel idea, letting everybody participate regardless of religious faith. Again, I say, walk with me, all of us. Walk with me. Join the parade. Let's get to work. One country... Under God, indivisible, power to the people. It goes back a little ways, but I mean that, power to the people. If it's a pontificating political speech, I apologize. But I'll say one thing. It is from the heart. Thank you.